And welcome back to the Cracking Bang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 2402, meeting rooms 3. Before we get into it, I know you guys love these Google questions, you watch them the most, so please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out. Alright, you are given an integer n. There are n rooms numbered from 0 to n minus 1. You're also given a 2D integer array meetings, where meetings of i equals start of i, end of i, meaning that a meeting will be held during the half-closed time interval from start i up until end i, where end i is not inclusive. All of the values of start i are unique, and meetings will be allocated to rooms in the following manner. Each meeting will take place in the unused room with the lowest number. If there are no f available rooms, the meeting should be delayed until a room becomes free, and the delayed meeting should have the same duration as the original meeting. When a room becomes unused, meetings that have an earlier original start time should be given the room and return the number of the room that held the most number of meetings. If there are multiple rooms, return the room with the lowest number. Okay, so basically this is like meeting rooms one and two, except for now they've just thrown a bunch of extra crap at us uh, that we have to deal with. Unfortunately, there's not actually enough space here for me to do a example, so I'm gonna wipe all of this away, and then we'll actually look at a practical example to kind of get a feel for the problem. So give me a second, let me wipe this away. Test. Okay, so we got rid of all of that writing. Let's now actually look at an example. So we're given that n equals two. So we have two meeting rooms and these are our meetings. So let's just keep track of the count of each of the meetings. So obviously it's going to be zero in the beginning. So we have our first meeting and obviously no meeting room has been assigned so we can just give it this meeting room. So the interval from zero to 10, uh, this will be assigned to meeting room zero. Now we get to our second meeting. So we process this one. Uh, we get to 1-5, so there's only one meeting room left, which is meeting room 1, so we need to assign it to that time. So we're going to say from 1 to 5, uh, it's going to go to 1. So now both of these have seen one value. Um, then we get to 2-7. So obviously 2-7 can't start because both of the meeting rooms are taken up, and at time 2, there's still this meeting going on, and there's still this meeting going on. So we're going to need to wait for the first one of these to finish. So obviously this one is much longer, so this one will actually free up first. So at time five, this meeting frees up because remember it's uh, not inclusive on the endpoint. So at time five, this one finishes. So then we can assign this one. So this one has a length of what, five? So that means that this next meeting is gonna run from where? So it's gonna run from five to 10, right? And this is gonna get assigned to meeting room one. So this one gets here. Um, and then we have this meeting, which gets queued, right? Because it can't start because it's, can't be assigned to this room because we have to go until time 10 for it to be freed up and this one also can't go because it has to wait until time 10 so both of these are going to get queued until time 10 which means that we have to wait so both of these will actually get freed up at time 10 so now we both we have the option of assigning it to zero or one for this last meeting and remember we always want to assign to the meeting room with the lowest um, number that's just what the problem tells us to do so in meeting room zero we're going to put this meeting which has a meet length of one so from 10 to 11 we're going to schedule a meeting and that's going to be in meeting room zero um, and we're going to have a count of two for uh, meeting room zero and meeting room one now remember that we want to return the meeting with the highest number of uh, sorry the room with the num highest number of meetings uh, in the case that we actually have a tie, we just want to return the one with the lowest number. So in this case, we want to return zero because they have the both, uh, uh, sorry, the same count. Therefore, we just return the smaller one, which is zero, and this is our solution. So on paper, it's relatively simple. Um, you can figure this out quite simply. Uh, but actually, in practice, it's a little bit more complicated, especially with the extra rules that they've thrown at us. But uh, just to tell you up front, we're still going to want to use the same Q, um, sorry, not Q, uh, heap approach that we used for the other problems uh, because we need to basically keep track of, you know, what the uh, meeting that's ending uh, the soonest will be. And we also want to keep track of the meeting that, um, uh, you know, the smallest room that we have assigned. So we're actually going to use two uh, min heaps here. And you'll see how we do that in a second when I wipe all this away and we can actually kind of just uh, think about the intuition of this problem. So let me just erase all of this and then we can actually talk about the intuition here. So we looked at a basic uh, example and kind of saw how it would work on paper, but how do we actually solve this uh, using code? And I kind of hinted at earlier that we want to use a two heap approach. 
Uh, so we're going to have two heaps, one which is going to keep track of the busy rooms, which is going to track the meetings um, that are currently being held. So we're going to track the meetings here. And uh, the other one is going to track the available rooms. Uh, available, right? So this is going to track the rooms, right? And the reason that we need a heap here is because this problem is ridiculous and tells us that we, when we have a meeting, we have to assign it to uh, the lowest possible room that's available. Uh, so we're going to need a uh, available min heap here to basically tell us what the, the minimum is. Otherwise, we'd, we could have like a list or like a set or something, but we'd have to find the minimum each time, which obviously is going to be big O of n, and then we have to loop over all the meetings. So our final result will actually be big O of n squared in that case, uh, which is not good. So we're going to have these two heaps and essentially what we want to do is we want to iterate over all of the meetings and each time we process a meeting first we're going to check whether or not we can free up anything from the, the busy. So check, uh, check if a meeting is ended, right? So check if a meeting uh, has ended. Jesus Christ, sorry, I cannot type with my fucking mouse here. Um, so check if a meeting has ended. If it's ended, then we can free it up, right? So we want to pop from the busy heap if the meeting has ended, and we want to also want to add it into the available heap because now we have that room available. Uh, so if we have uh, rooms available, we just want to take the smallest possible one. Luckily, we're using a min heap, so all we have to do is just pop from the top. Um, and then we're going to get whatever the available one is and then we're going to add it to the busy. Uh, if there's no rooms available, then we need to actually add it to basically, um, you know, some sort of queue to basically track things. But what we can actually do is just add it to the busy uh, and then we will basically sort out uh, the times later. Um, we don't actually have to put it into a separate data structure. We'll just put it into busy and then we'll actually check uh, whether or not um, we can actually process it. So we will deal with that case individually. But other than that, um, we just want to, you know, go through all the meetings. We'll have a array basically track what's going on here lag there for a second. We'll basically create an array uh, with index, sorry, with values of zero for each one of the meetings. So say we have four meeting rooms. Um, we'll basically just use, you know, this array to store our results. And then at the end, all we have to do is simply find uh, the minimum here and then we also have to find the index of the minimum in the case that we have a tie uh, We want to find the I guess left most value because we want the smallest possible room So there's a bunch of like little rules here that we have to follow but luckily the questions code is actually really simple it I in my um, Opinion it's actually harder to explain kind of on paper what you need to do But the code is actually really simple so we can just look at that and I'll walk you through it line by line. So now what I want to do is, you guys know the drill, let's go to the code editor and uh, type this up now that we have an idea of what we want to do at a high level. We are in the code editor, let's type this up. So remember that we actually need to keep track of the busy rooms and the available rooms. So let's define those heaps. So busy obviously is going to be empty because we haven't um, had any meetings yet. And available uh, is oops, available, no available Gee, okay there we go I can spell um, available is going to be all of the rooms because obviously we haven't done any yet so this is gonna be I for I in range n uh, now what we need to do is actually set up our count uh, data structure which is going to store all the counts though so obviously each of the n rooms uh, is gonna start with a count of zero so this is how we're going to keep track of the count we're simply going to um, you know uh, increment by index every time we see that room. So now what we need to do is we are actually not guaranteed that meetings is given to us sorted in chronological order. Obviously, we need to process the meetings in chronological order. Um, otherwise, this problem wouldn't really work. So we need to actually sort here. So we're going to say meetings.sort and that will actually sort our meetings um, based on the start time, which is what we want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say for start and in meetings. What we're going to do is remember we need to actually check whether or not um, we actually have some rooms available and the way that we're going to do that is if the end time of a meeting is actually uh, before the start time of our current meeting then that means that because the meetings are sorted in chronological order we can actually just get rid of that meeting because it's already finished right so we're going to say while busy and busy of zero so the top of the heap right the earliest ending meeting and in our heap, we're going to store something like this. We're going to store the end time and the room number here. So obviously the top of the heap 
is going to return some tuple here and the zeroth element is going to return the end time. So that's why we do busy of zero zero to basically extract that number, right? So if the end time of that meeting is less than or equal to the start of our current meeting, and we can have equal to because remember the end times are not inclusive. So a meeting can end at a time and one can start at the exact same time, right? You can have a meeting that ends at 1030 and then yours also starts at 1030. Um, you just use the same room, right? So if uh, this holds true, then that means that we can get rid of stuff. So basically, we just want to get rid of as many uh, meetings that are being used at the moment uh, that aren't that are already finished, sorry, uh, as we can. So we don't care about the end time and we just want the room number. So we're going to say, uh, you know, just comma. Oh, actually, we'll just do this because some languages may not have this. So end room is going to equal to heap Q dot heap uh, pop from busy. So we're going to basically just pop from busy here. And um, what we're going to do now is we need to basically put that room into our available, right? So we're going to say heap Q dot heap push. Uh, we're going to push onto the available heap available. Uh, we're going to put that room number, right? Because it's now available. All right. So now that we've cleaned up all the meetings that have already finished, now we can actually decide uh, whether or not we uh, can book our meeting or it has to get queued, right? So if we have availability, so if available, um, so basically if it's not empty, and that means that we have rooms, right? So the room we're going to assign it to if it's not empty is simply going to be heap queue dot heap pop. So we're just going to pop from our available um, heap, right? And that will give us a room available. Sorry, I think I called it avail in the um, in the actual demo. So we're going to get a room and then we're going to now put that room onto the actual, um, you know, the the busy heap because now it's being used, right? So we're going to say heap queue dot heap push. We're going to push onto the busy heap. And remember, the form of what we're putting is going to be end and whatever the room time is. So end we get from here because it's in the meetings array. And then the room is the room that we just popped from the available heap. So we have now just populated our busy. Otherwise, if there's no rooms available, then we need to basically uh, queue it. And we don't actually want to use a separate data structure here. We're actually just going to um, basically just put put it into the room. Um, that would finish first, right? So we can look at the the, the meeting that's going to end the soonest, and that room will be the room that we actually can assign this one to. So the way that we're going to get that is we're going to say time room equals to heap q dot heap pop. Oops, dot heap pop. So we're going to get the top of the heap uh, from busy, and we're going to say that this room is actually now so heap uh, q dot heap push. So we're going to push onto the heap that onto the busy heap, right? Whatever the time that that meeting was going to end, because we're going to assign our current meeting to it as soon as it finishes, we're actually going to kind of be tricky here and say that the new ending time for this room, because it's the first one to finish, right? We're popping from the top of busy, which means that it's the first room to finish. And we're going to assign our current meeting to that one, which means that the new time that this one is going to end is that whatever the time it was going to end, plus what are we going to do plus end minus start, right? So that's the difference in time between end and start, which is our meeting length here. We're going to add that difference to the time it was going to end. So now this room is going to be taken up until uh, from whatever time is, which is the original booking plus whatever, um, you know, the length of our current meeting is. And this way we can actually kind of be tricky here and uh, do this. So and obviously the room is going to stay the same. Now what we want to do is we have now assigned things to the room. So we're going to say count for the room. We're just going to in increment it by one. Uh, and then we're actually just going to go through all of our meetings. Now, remember that we actually need to return the meeting room that had the most meetings. And it also, in the case of a tie, needs to be the meeting room with the smallest possible um, value, right? So what we're going to return here is going to be count dot index. So we want to return the index of whatever the maximum of the count is, right? So we'll get the maximum out of here. And then calling index will return the leftmost position uh, of that, you know, occurrence. So in the case that there's multiple values that have a maximum, it will simply return the leftmost one, which is what we want. Because remember, the counts are basically in ascending order. So 0, 1, 2, all up until n minus 1. So that's why uh, we can do this. So that is going to be how we actually want to solve this question. 
let me now just run this, make sure I didn't make any stupid syntax mistakes. Uh, equals i for, oh, i in, what am I doing? i in range n, okay, let's double check. Heap, heap, q dot heap push, what the hell? Oh, three p's, okay, this is why we run things. Okay, cool, I uh, clearly have not had my morning coffee yet. So let us now submit this and double check that it actually gets, what the hell happened? Oh my god, okay, sorry guys, I have not had my coffee yet. Okay, hopefully, okay, I hope I can spell. English is my first language. Uh, wrong answer, that's not good. So in my attempt to actually be helpful, I uh, messed myself up and let's see if anyone can spot the bug. Here it is, basically this end and room, while this part is true, uh, the problem here is that this end will actually overwrite the end from the meetings, uh, and obviously that's not right, because we use it down here and we need the original one uh, for this part, so uh, whoops there. Let's just prefix this with an underscore, uh, and now we can actually submit this and it should be fine. So obviously, okay, cool, accept it. All right. Let's now actually think about the time and space complexity here. So for the time, um, we have meetings.sort, right? So this is going to take big O of n log n, pretty standard. Now, what about the actual processing here? So we know that we have n meetings, so this is gonna be big O of n times what? So in the worst case, what we're doing is we're just uh, pushing and popping uh, from a heap, right? And the, the size of the heap in the worst case is going to be all n elements. Uh, so this is actually just going to be uh, log n here. And you know we do that for all the n meetings. So that means that our total time complexity, we have two parts which are actually n log n. So this is just two times big O, uh, oops, big O of n log n, uh, which means that asymptotically it's just gonna be n log n. So um, space complexity wise, obviously we create this available, uh, which is going to store all of the, um, you know, all, all of the available rooms and busy could also contain all of the rooms. So in this case, it's just gonna be big O of N uh, because we're basically just going to end up creating a data structure, which could at the worst case store all of the uh, meetings. So it's gonna be big O of N uh, or I guess where, where n equals number of meetings, in case that wasn't obvious. And uh, yeah, that's how you solve this problem. Uh, like I said, really similar to meeting rooms one and two, except for with those like really ridiculous, um, you know, requirements now uh, that you need to allocate the rooms in a given manner. But otherwise, could it be a hard question? I guess more of a difficult medium than an actual hard, but whatever, it's a Google question. Uh, you guys seem to love these and you know it's being asked at google now so uh yeah anyway that's enough blabbing for me if you enjoyed the video please leave a, a like and a comment um it definitely helps me out with the youtube algorithm if you want to see more content like this uh especially elite code videos and mock interviews is something that i'll be doing a lot in the new year so please uh stay tuned for that if you want to improve your interview skills you can see uh, actual people tackling the interview and giving my live feedback. They are a little bit longer to watch. I understand that. Maybe I'll just do one question once because they're easier to digest, uh, but we'll see because uh, it's not as useful for the person taking it. But um, anyway, that's something we can figure out. Why am I blabbing? You're probably not even going to listen to this, but if you did, let me know that you made it this far and that I talk too much. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, uh, that's enough for me. I'm going to stop talking now. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.